keynote uh, 021 results and TMB. Thank you, Honor Keta, and thank you all for being here. So uh, my uh, talk later today will be on TMB and outcomes for CarboPEM with or without PEMBRO uh, for non-squamous, non-small cell and analysis of uh, Keynote 021. My disclosures. <coughs> Mouse is not cooperating. There we go. Uh, as you're well aware, TMB has been widely evaluated as a biomarker for immunotherapy in uh, advanced non-small cell and may identify patients who are more likely to respond to immune checkpoint inhibitors. We have very limited data on whether TMB has any value as a biomarker for chemo, either given alone or with an immune checkpoint inhibitor. Uh, the phase 1-2 Keynote 021 study was the first study to show the efficacy and safety of the anti-PD-1 immune checkpoint inhibitor um, uh, PEMBRO given in combination with uh, uh, chemotherapy. And so we explored and uh, performed an exploratory analysis of Keynote 021 to determine if TMB might have value as a biomarker for PEM and CARBO given either alone or with pembrolizumab. Just to remind you, the uh, study designs, uh, we assessed TMB by whole exome sequencing of tumor tissue and matched normal DNA, and this is referred to as TTMB or tissue TMB. Cohort C included 24 patients, uh, 12 of whom were in the uh, TMB analysis. Uh, basically, PEMBRO at either uh, 2 mg per kg or 10 mg per kg in combination with PEM carbo in treatment naive, non squamous, non small cell in the absence of any activating mutation. Cohort G was much larger, randomized phase 2 of the uh, triplet combination with a flat dose of PEMBRO at 200 uh, mg every three weeks versus PEM carbo alone, again, the same eligibility. We performed one analysis to assess whether T, uh, tissue TMB as a continuous variable was associated with outcomes for PEMBRO plus chemo and uh, with outcomes for chemo alone. And we performed a second analysis to assess whether the response rate differed in participants with TMB high versus low tumors who were treated with the uh, three-drug combination. You can see here uh, the demographics are actually fairly well matched for both the TMB evaluable population and the total population, and response uh, rates were closely matched. Uh, and the TMB evaluable population uh, response uh, rate for the PEMBRO combination was 66% versus 38% for chemo alone, and for the total population, 63% and 31% respectively. There was no association between tissue TMB and efficacy for PEMBRO and chemo or for chemotherapy alone, whether we look at overall response rate, progression-free survival, or overall survival. Uh, nor was there any association between TMB and PDL1 with the p-value of 0 0.34. Uh, roughly 48% uh, had uh, high um, uh, TMB that was defined as 175 mutations per exome. Response rate for the uh, triplet in that group was 71 percent, and low TMB below 175 mutations per exome, 52 percent of the overall group, their response rate was 61 percent, so no difference in outcome based on TMB status. So tissue TMB assessed by whole exome sequencing was not significantly associated with efficacy for PEMBRO and combination PEM-CARBO or for chemo alone as first-line treatment for patients with metastatic non-squamous, non-small cell, nor was there any significant correlation with PDL1 expression. Response rate with PEMBRO and chemo is high in both the TMB high and TMB low subgroups. Obviously, an analysis of much larger data sets is needed to assess whether the benefit of PEMBRO and chemo relative to chemo alone differs in patients with either TMB high or TMB low. And um, my presentation, obviously, is the appetizer, the hors d'oeuvre for Dr. Garasina's much larger presentation. So, yeah, thank you. If uh, you agree, we can discuss together after 